The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and uh, welcome back to Open 2.0. I am your host Alyssa Colon and I hope you all are staying safe and positive during this time. We have a very special guest joining us today with some important and exciting news. Superintendent Ms. Ross Porter is here and she is going to talk to us about a cool initiative she is a part of with lo local education and our Bronx Neck TV. Welcome to the show Ms. Porter. So to start the show, my first question is, um, can you talk about your role and what does a superintendent um, entails and what community slash schools you work with? Sure. So as the executive superintendent for the Bronx, I am first charged with supervision and oversight of 307 schools, um, all of the eight superintendents who supervise the 307 principals. We uncover the, I, I cover the entire Bronx, um, and I also supervise the Bronx uh, Central Office, which is also the kind of professional development um, and operations side of the Central Department of Education that lives here in the Bronx. So, um, uh, approximately almost a oh, little over 200,000 students, 307 schools and principals and eight superintendents and a borough office is under my supervision. Wow, that's a lot. The global pandemic and schools closing have been a huge shock to everyone. Education, I mean, educators, students and families are now dealing with these um, hard changes. So how do you think this pandemic is directly affecting Bronx families and local school systems, especially right in the middle of the school year? Well, first, it is just the interruption of formal education in the way that we know it, right? And so the elimination of socialization and the way in which we generally approach school. Um, but also forced us to quickly try to make an adjustment to remote learning. And so how do we make sure that we stay engaged with families and students um, while we are all, you know, in um, semi-quarantine in our homes? Um, and so that's been a huge jump for us as a system overall, but particularly in the Bronx where we have communities that have internet issues, device issues, um, you know, we've been really thinking about what are some creative ways we can approach remote learning to ensure that every single Bronx student gets a fair opportunity and an equal opportunity, well, uh, well, not even equal, an equitable opportunity to engage in learning at the highest levels. Thank you. Um, my next question is, I know that you and local um, educators in partnership with BronxNet TV are working on a blueprint um, Bronx education channel initiatives. Um, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so this is super exciting. It's an opportunity for educators to partner with community-based organizations, elected officials, parents, families, and students, most importantly students, to create another avenue for learning to happen. We know not every single student has a device, um, we know some students are operating from uh, different kind of paper packets and engaging with their schools in that way. Um, and so as, as I think about my role in what remote learning means for the Bronx, it means identifying every single avenue that we absolutely can to get in the homes of our students. And creating this space and partnering with BronxNet is a super special and unique opportunity for us to get into the houses of our students, but also give them access to that education that I talked about earlier. So I'm really excited about this. I think we're the first borough talking about this and partnering around this. Um, and, you know, I know BronxNet has long been a real community partner across the borough. And so stepping up and saying, how can we partner on this level, you know, to really continue to educate our students and give a space to build a larger platform that we can count on and say, 
not only do we have the various ways that we're meeting on in Google Classroom and Google Meets and all of those other virtual platforms our schools are using, um, but you can also go to our local stations and, and have an opportunity to engage in remote learning from your television set. And so we just, I just see it as such a unique opportunity to create again. That's all I'm thinking about is what are all the different platforms that we can leverage in remote learning? Because remote learning is not just about a device. It's about the, the varying ways in which we connect with students while we are not in school. Thank you so much. I'm really, we're really excited for um, that to be brought here at BronxNet. Um, my next question is, what kind of programs can students and family expect from the initiative and TV broadcasting? Yes, yeah, so we're looking forward to obviously educational programming. We have some teachers working on science lessons and literacy lessons, um, but we also want to get young people involved and we want to explore the arts through this space. We want to give a platform for young people to have voice. We want to offer opportunities to offer programming in varying languages and honoring the various cultures and communities that that live in the Bronx. And so, um, you know, we, we have a starting point where we're like, let's think about the ways in which we regularly engage in school, but also how can we really leverage this space to be creative, celebrate culture, celebrate community, um, but also, you know, give students access to real learning. Our, our students are sitting in algebra and geometry classes online and, 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 and with packages. And so how can we bring some of those lessons to life uh, through this medium. And so we're, we're just excited about the range of opportunities that this partnership offers us. Will programming be inspired and followed by New York State learning standards for students of all grades, levels, and needs? Absolutely. And, you know, we have teachers already volunteering and schools already stepping up to say we want to do this, but like our work is rooted in um, leveraging the standards to advance learning. And that's how we make sure that our students, our Bronx students, are getting access to a high level, high quality education. So we'll absolutely be leveraging those standards that, you know, are, are the foundation for, for school for us. That's amazing. Um, the next question is, will the Education Channel Initiative be interactive? Can students, family, local um, educators, artists, and organizations get involved, and how? Absolutely. So I want to shout out Luis Torres, principal of CS55, who everybody knows uh, probably across the world, and um, uh, Timothy Coleman, the family leadership coordinator from District 7, who are partnering with me to do this. Um, but that's the plan. One, one of the things I keep talking about with different groups is this is an opportunity for us to be old school community, right? The, the way we used to define community. And it wasn't like these silos, right? Like the school is one community, the CBO is one community, the local businesses is one community. But really, you know, how are we a community collective? And so, you know, I, I think that, you know, my dream for this would be that all of those folks, local business owners who, who used to see our kids every morning getting their bacon, egg and cheese for breakfast or their chopped cheese in the afternoon for lunch, wanna, would, would be interested in coming on and talking about how you become a small business owner and giving lessons. I reached out actually to one of my former students, um, who is a, a, a aspiring and, and actually pretty successful right now um, rap artist. And I said to him, I'm going to reach out to you because I want you to help me with something for Bronx students. And so I see this as an opportunity to leverage our relationships, leverage our partnerships and rebuild our community because remote learning is not going to work just because of what happens from the schoolhouse. It's gonna be what our neighbors do for each other. It's gonna be what our local businesses do for our neighbors. It's gonna be what our educators, local businesses, community-based organizations do in partnership with our neighbors. So I see this as a platform for all of us to come together and make sure that the Bronx, that our students um, actually during this time advance and move forward. I'm really proud that last year in the Bronx, we we outgrew the city and that had, ne had never happened on, on our state exams. We outgrew the way in which the, we didn't outperform the city, but we outgrew them. And so we had 
had the greatest growth. And so I want to see that happen again, just in a different way, in a different space. We have the most creative, inspiring young people in our schools and in our communities. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us all to partner and leverage that space, this, this space, actually, this platform to expand what learning looks like. That's honestly really amazing. And it's great to have um, people to come and represent the Bronx and, you know, having local neighbors come in, you know, just to bring the Bronx together. Um, my last question is, do you have any advice and tips for Bronx youth and families during this time? Well, first, I just want people to take care of themselves. I want people to stay at home because there's the other side of this. And I'm looking forward to the big Bronx party on the other side of this. Um, but right now, I really want people to stay home, take care of yourselves and your families, um, and just really be well. But know that, you know, the Bronx is strong. And we've always been strong. And so we are going to weather this storm, but we're not going to be left behind in the storm. We're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep advancing. And what I really want for the young people that are, sitting, that are sitting at home, I want them to really think about and use this time to see where, think about where you want to be a year from now, because this is a great opportunity and a great moment to reflect. And as you think about what you want as a learner, what you want for your life, like really leverage this moment, but also leverage this moment to be super creative and think about that. And I've been watching it. I've, I've gotten some artwork from students. I've seen some spoken word. I've seen some science experiments that young people are doing from home. Use this time to really explore and be creative, but also use this time to enjoy being with your family. We don't get enough time with each other. Um, and there will be another side to this, but also just remember that we are Bronx strong Bronx strong all day, every day. Um, and I, I want people to keep that spirit in their hearts and minds. Wow, I'm really excited about this Bronx Education Channel initiatives and can't wait to connect with local um, students, families, teachers, and artists. I want to say thank you so much for joining us, Superintendent Miss Ross Porter, and thank you for you guys for tuning in. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy during this time. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time on the next Open 2.0. Thank you.